Simplify using trigonometric identities, more challenging problems one. In Simplify using trigonometric identities, we simplified these six expressions. For these more advanced problems in this lesson, four of them, we're going to use the same identities as we did earlier, which are the reciprocal identities, the tangent and cotangent identities, and the Pythagorean identities. And we're also going to use the same algebraic techniques as we used earlier, including finding a common factor, using the difference of squares, finding a common denominator, and dividing by a fraction by multiplying by its reciprocal. To go to the previous lesson, I invite the viewer to click here to see these six expressions on the right simplified. Here's the first problem we'll look at. I strongly encourage the viewer to pause the video lesson and work ahead as much as possible to get more out of it. Simplify the expression to either a constant or a basic trigonometric function. We have 1 plus the tangent of x over 1 plus the cotangent of x. The main strategy here will be to restate the ratios in terms of sine and cosine and then try to simplify from there. Here are the tangent and cotangent identities. We'll use the tangent identity to rewrite the tangent of x and the cotangent identity re to rewrite the cotangent of x. And here they are with the replacements. We have 1 plus the sine of x over the cosine of x over 1 plus the cosine of x over the sine of x. Next, we will find a common denominator in both the numerator and the denominator of this big fraction. In the numerator, we'll have a common denominator of cosine x, and in the denominator, a common denominator of sine x. So using common denominators, we can rewrite 1 in the numerator as the cosine of x over the cosine of x, and we can also rewrite the 1 in the denominator as sine of x over sine x. We are being asked to simplify the expression. I have a question for you. Does this look like it's simplified from the original version of the expression? No, any reasonable person would say that it's more complicated. Often in the process of simplifying, we need to expand the expression before things cancel out. And until we start canceling, the expression may appear to be more complicated. And now coming up to the top, we can rewrite both the numerator and the denominator. The numerator has a common denominator of cosine x, and the denominator has a common denominator of sine x. We have a division by a fraction. Fortunately, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So to divide by sine x plus cosine x over sine x, we can multiply by sine x over sine x plus cosine x. I hope you can see that these circled expressions are reciprocals of each other. And cosine x plus sine x over sine x plus cosine x cancel to equal 1. So this leaves us with the sine x over the cosine of x, which going back to our tangent identity equals the tangent of x which we box in as our correct answer. This is pretty significantly simplified from our original expression. Next problem, simplify the expression to either a constant or a basic trigonometric function. We have quantity secant squared x plus cosecant squared x minus quantity tangent squared x plus cotangent squared x. For this one, we'll access the Pythagorean identities. We're going to replace secant squared x with tangent squared x plus 1 and we'll replace cosecant squared x with 1 plus cotangent squared x. And here's the expression with the replacements made. First, we will simplify within the left parentheses and remove the parentheses. We have 2 plus tangent squared x plus cotangent squared x minus quantity tangent squared x plus cotangent squared x. We can notice that we have tangent squared x plus cotangent squared x here on the left and we have minus tangent squared x plus cotangent squared x on the right. So these two items to the right of 2 cancel by subtraction. So we bring down what's left, the number 2, which we box in as our correct answer, significantly simplified from the original. Next problem, simplify the expression to either a constant or a basic trigonometric function. We have secant squared u minus tangent squared u over cosine squared v plus sine squared v. The cosine squared v plus cosine squared v should say something to us. It should suggest this. The Pythagorean identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So we can replace the denominator with 1. So we now have secant squared u minus tangent squared u over 1. 
which is secant squared u minus tangent squared u. Next, we'll bring out the Pythagorean identity that has secant squared theta and tangent squared theta, and it's tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. We can subtract tangent squared theta from both sides of the identity. Tangent squared theta minus tangent squared theta cancel to equal 0. So we have 1 equals secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta. So we can replace secant squared u minus tangent squared u with 1. And replacing, we have the expression equal to 1, which we box in as our correct answer. Again, significantly simplified. All we needed for this one was two versions of the Pythagorean identity. In this last problem of the lesson, we have instructions that are a little different. Use the basic identities to change the expression to 1 involving only sines and cosines. Then simplify to a basic trigonometric function. And we have the expression sine x times quantity tangent x plus cotangent x. We get a lot of direction in the instructions. We can change the expression to sines and cosines with the tangent and cotangent identities. Tangent x will be replaced by sine x over cosine x, and cotangent x will be replaced with cosine x over sine x. And here it is with the replacement. We have sine x times quantity sine x over cosine x plus cosine x over sine x. We're going to need to get a common denominator by multiplying cosine x and sine x together. And to use our common denominator, it's uh, kind of like cross-multiplying across the terms. And so we get sine x times quantity sine squared x over cosine x sine x plus cosine squared x over cosine x sine x. Next, we can place sine squared x plus cosine squared x over the single denominator of cosine x sine x to create a single fraction. We have sine squared x plus cosine squared x here on top. Does this look familiar? It should by now. The Pythagorean identity is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So we can replace sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, or sine squared x plus cosine squared x with 1. So bringing the expression to the top right, we have the sine of x times 1 over the cosine x sine x. And sine x over sine x canceled equal 1. So we bring down what's left, and that's 1 over cosine x. And for this, we can bring in the reciprocal identity, the secant theta equals 1 over the cosine of theta. Therefore, 1 over the cosine of x equals the secant of x, which we box in as our correct answer. I hope that working through these simplifications has been helpful to you. I invite the viewer to go to simplify using trigonometric identities more challenging problems too for some more problems simplifying using these identities. This has been Simplify Using Trigonometric Identities More Challenging Problems 1. Thanks for viewing.